Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another video here at my channel, Jesus Truth. Thank you very much for stopping by. The title of this video is, Where Did the Quran Come From? You know, I have mentioned this topic a couple times in my other videos, and I didn't get any comments or responses. I didn't get the feedback that I was expecting. The more I thought about it and prayed about it, the more I realized that this is the most important part of the Quran. It can't be ignored. I really want to emphasize how important this topic is. For example, you have all these Muslim scholars and teachers out there quoting the Quran and saying how great it is and how great Allah is, but they never talk about where the Quran came from. Many of these scholars spend 20, 30, 40 years, some their entire lives, studying and teaching the Quran and they never talk about where the Quran originated. It dumbfounds me that they can skip or ignore this vital topic. So in this video, I'm going to go into great detail on where the Quran actually came from. There will be four parts in this video, and let's get started with part number one. Part number one, where did the Quran come from? Let me show you some references that show exactly where the Quran came from. I will leave links down below for all of these so you can verify them if you would like. First, whyislam.org, a pro-Islam website. It says, In 610, the angel Gabriel visited Muhammad with the first divine message. For the next 23 years, he continued to receive revelations until the message was completed. Muhammad called people towards the belief in one God and encouraged them to be just and merciful to one another. Next, we have muslim.org, another pro-Islam website. It says, the revelations in the Holy Quran were brought to the Holy Prophet Muhammad by the angel Gabriel in the form of clear words of the Arabic language. Next we have allislam.org, another pro-Islam website. It reads, When Muhammad was 40 years old, he was commanded by God through his angel Gabriel to declare his oneness to the idolaters and polytheists of the whole world and to deliver the message of peace to an embattled humanity. In response to this command of heaven, Muhammad launched the momentous program called Islam, which was to change the destiny of mankind forever. Next, MuslimVoices.org, another pro-Islam website. It says, Some non-Muslims might be surprised to hear is that the angel Gabriel is also an important figure in Islam. It was actually Gabriel who recited the Quran to Muhammad in a cave, Hira, near Mecca. Up next, aboutislam.net, another pro-Islam website. It reads, And then right at the end, the angel Gabriel and Prophet Muhammad, he revealed to Prophet Muhammad the order the Quran would be revealed in. And what we have now, the Quran that we look at, that was put together by Prophet Muhammad and the angel Gabriel, it brought together all the verses revealed in different places over 23 years and put into the order we find them today. Next, we have AboutReligion.com. It says, The Hadith, a collection of Muslim narratives about the Prophet Muhammad, includes the Hadith of Gabriel, which describes how Archangel Gabriel quizzes Muhammad about Islam to test how well he understood the religion. Gabriel appeared to Muhammad over a 23-year period to dictate the Quran word by word, Muslims believe. Next, we have JewishVirtualLibrary.org. It reads, The recitation began one night in the year 610 AD. Muhammad was sitting alone in the wilderness near Mecca when the angel Gabriel appeared to him. The angel called out to him with the command, Recite, recite, recite. Muhammad responded, I am not a reader. The angel recited three verses to him, and when he awoke, he had these verses, as he said, inscribed in his heart. Next up we have Stanford University. It says, During Ramadan, he went to live in a cave on Mount Hira. The archangel Gabriel appeared to him and ordered him to read, but he said he could not, so Gabriel embraced him. From that day on, Gabriel frequently visited him and the words he spoke to Muhammad were later written down by scribes. He and his wife began confiding the angel's words to a few close friends. Next we have wikiislam.net. According to Islamic scriptures, 
Gabriel is the angel who first appeared to Muhammad in the cave of Hira and taught Muhammad the Quran. Next up is wikipedia.org. Muslims believe the Quran was verbally revealed by God to Muhammad through the angel Gabriel, gradually over a period of approximately 23 years, beginning on December 22, 609, when Muhammad was 40, and concluding in the year 632, the year of his death. And finally, the Quran itself says that it was the angel Gabriel. Let's look at Quran.com. In chapter 53, verse 5, He has been taught this Quran by one mighty in power, which is Gabriel. Also in chapter 75, verse 18, So when we have recited it through Gabriel, then follow its recitation. So there are 11 resources that show it was the angel Gabriel who gave the information to Muhammad. I could have kept going and given more resources, but I think you get the point. So, whether you are a follower of Islam, a Christian, an atheist, a Buddhist monk, whatever your beliefs, it doesn't matter. We can all agree 100%, with absolutely no doubts, that it was the angel Gabriel who gave Muhammad the information for the Quran. Okay, let's move on to part two. Part two, what do we know about the angel Gabriel? If we go back in history and research the angel Gabriel, we don't find very much. But what we do find is that the angel Gabriel appears four times in the Bible, two times in the Old Testament and two times in the New Testament. Let's look at these verses. The first time Gabriel appears is in Daniel chapter 8, verses 16 and 17. It says, And I heard a man's voice between the banks of the Ulai, who called and said, Gabriel, make this man understand the vision. So he came near where I stood, and when he came, I was afraid and fell on my face. But he said to me, Understand, son of man, that the vision refers to the time of the end. In these verses, Gabriel is summoned by God to show Daniel the meaning of a vision he had received regarding the kings of Media, Persia, and Greece. The second time Gabriel appears is to Daniel again, this time in Daniel chapter 9, verses 20 through 22. It says, Now while I was speaking, praying, and confessing my sin and the sin of my people Israel, and presenting my supplication before the Lord my God for the holy mountain of my God, yes, while I was speaking in prayer, the man Gabriel, whom I had seen in the vision at the beginning, being caused to fly swiftly, reached me about the time of the evening offering, and he informed me and talked with me. And he said, O Daniel, I have now come forth to give you skill to understand. In these verses, Gabriel is giving Daniel a prophecy regarding the time Christ would appear and fulfill his ministry. This is known as the 70 weeks prophecy. Now, Let's look at the New Testament and the third time Gabriel appears in the Bible. In Luke chapter 1 verse 13 it says, But the angel said to him, Do not be afraid, Zacharias, for your prayer is heard, and your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son, and you shall call his name John. And on to Luke chapter 1 verses 18 and 19. And Zacharias said to the angel, How shall I know this? For I am an old man, and my wife is well advanced in years. And the angel answered and said to him, I am Gabriel who stands in the presence of God, and was sent to speak to you and bring you these glad tidings. So in these verses, even though Elizabeth was barren and they were both well advanced in years, Gabriel brought the news of this wonderful miracle that would soon occur, the birth of John the Baptist. This is the third account of Gabriel's delivering a message. Six months after Elizabeth conceived, God sent Gabriel to deliver a message to her younger relative Mary, who was living in Nazareth of Galilee. Let's look at Luke chapter 1, verses 26 through 35. Now in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth, to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And having come in, the angel said to her, Rejoice, highly favored one, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. But when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying and considered what manner of greeting this was. Then the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bring forth a son, and shall call his name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Highest, and the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Then Mary said to the angel, 
How can this be, since I do not know a man? And the angel answered and said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the highest will overshadow you. Therefore, also, that Holy One who is to be born will be called the Son of God. This is absolutely amazing. Gabriel told Mary that she would miraculously conceive and that she would give birth to the one who would be called Jesus, the Son of the Highest. And the Lord God will give him the throne, and of his kingdom there will be no end. This is the fourth and final account of the angel Gabriel delivering a message on God's behalf. So what we know about Gabriel is that he appeared twice to Daniel to tell him about prophecies. He appeared to Zacharias to tell him about the birth of his son, John the Baptist. And he appeared to Mary to tell her about the miracle virgin birth of Jesus Christ, the Lord and Savior of the world. Also, don't forget what it says in Luke chapter 1, verse 19. I am Gabriel, who stands in the presence of God. So we know that Gabriel stands in the presence of God. With that knowledge, we know that Gabriel witnessed everything that happened in the Bible. Gabriel was aware of Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden, Abraham and his sons, Noah and the Flood, Moses and the Exodus, of course the virgin birth of Jesus since Gabriel delivered that message, and Jesus' persecution and death on the cross. Also, Jesus' resurrection three days later and his ascension into heaven. Gabriel knows everything that happened in the Bible since he stands in the presence of God. With all that said, whether you are a follower of Islam, a Christian, an atheist, a Buddhist monk, whatever your beliefs, it doesn't matter. We can all agree 100% with absolutely no doubts that this is the knowledge that we have regarding the angel Gabriel. Okay, let's move on to part number three. Part number three, would Gabriel have said these things to Muhammad in the cave? Here is a picture of the entrance of the cave of Hira, which is a few miles away from Mecca. This is where, supposedly, the angel Gabriel recited the Quran to Muhammad over a 23 year period. And here is a picture of a group of tourists visiting this famous site. Now, let's look at some verses in the Quran and see if they match up to what we know about Gabriel and Gabriel's knowledge of the Bible. Keep in mind, and this is very, very important, that everything in the Quran, every single word, came from Gabriel to Muhammad. All the Quran verses used in this video are from Quran.com, and I will be using the Yusuf Ali translation which is considered by many to be the most accurate English translation. In chapter 23, verse 91, it says, No son did Allah beget, nor is there any God along with him. Behold, each God would have taken away what he had created, and some would have lorded it over others. Glory to Allah! He is free from the sort of things they attribute to him. Wait a second! Red flag warning! This verse says that Allah never had a son. What? Are you serious? This is in complete contradiction to what Gabriel told Mary in Luke chapter 1. Gabriel would never have told Muhammad that. This is a lie. Let's look at Luke chapter 1 verse 35 again. And the angel answered and said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the highest will overshadow you. Therefore, also, that Holy One who is to be born will be called the Son of God. There is a big contradiction between what the angel Gabriel said to the Virgin Mary and what this angel of the Quran said to Muhammad over 600 years later. To Mary, Gabriel said that the child to be born to her would be the Messiah, the Son of God, while the angel who dictated the Quran to Muhammad said that Allah never had a son. Let's look at another verse in the Quran. Chapter 18, verse 4. Further, that he may warn those who say, Allah hath begotten a son. No knowledge have they of such a thing nor had their fathers. It is a grievous thing that issues from their mouths, as a saying what they say is nothing but falsehood. Wait a second, another red flag warning. These verses also say that Allah never had a son. Gabriel would never have told Muhammad that. This is a lie. Let's compare this to what John 3.16 says. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Let's keep moving and look at chapter 17, verse 111 of the Quran. Say, praise be to Allah, who begets no son, and has no partner in his dominion, nor he any to protect him from humiliation. Yeah, 
Magnify him for his greatness and glory. Wait a second. Another red flag warning. Again, this verse repeats that Allah had no son. Gabriel would have never told Muhammad that. This is another lie. Let's compare this to what John 5.18 says. Therefore the Jews sought all the more to kill him, because he not only broke the Sabbath, but also said that God was his father, making himself equal with God. So it is clear to see that the Quran teaches that Allah had no son, while the Bible teaches that Jesus is the son of God. Obviously, we have a problem here. Now, let's look at the Quran and see what it teaches about the death of Jesus. In chapter 4, verse 157 and 158, it says that they said in boast, We killed Christ Jesus, the son of Mary, the messenger of Allah, but they killed him not, nor crucified him, but so it was made to appear to them. And those who differ therein are full of doubts, with no certain knowledge, but only conjecture to follow, for of a surety they killed him not. Nay, Allah raised him up unto himself, and Allah is exalted in power, wise. Wait a second, another red flag warning. These verses say they killed him not, nor crucified him, for of a surety they killed him not. Gabriel would not have told Muhammad that. This is a lie. Let's compare this to what the Bible says about Jesus' death. In Romans chapter 5, verses 6 through 8, For when we were still without strength, in due time Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die. Yet perhaps for a good man someone would even dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love towards us, in that while we are still sinners, Christ died for us. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 3, For I delivered to you, first of all, that which I also received, that Christ died for our sins, according to the scriptures. In 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 18, For Christ also suffered once for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but made alive by the Spirit. And in John chapter 10, verses 17 and 18, Therefore my Father loves me, because I lay down my life, that I may take it again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of myself. I have power to lay it down and I have power to take it again. This command I have received from my Father. Simply amazing. Jesus has power over life and death. Nobody else in the history of the world has that power. So here's the bottom line. It is impossible that the angel Gabriel, being God's faithful angel and messenger, would be capable of telling a lie or being deceived. So, it is therefore impossible that the same angel Gabriel appeared to both Mary and to Muhammad. It is therefore impossible for the Gabriel to have been the angel who dictated the lies in the Quran to Muhammad. With all that said, whether you are a follower of Islam, a Christian, an atheist, a Buddhist monk, whatever your beliefs, it doesn't matter. We can all agree 100%, with absolutely no doubt, that there were two different angels involved in these events. So who was this other angel? Let's find out in part four. Part four. Where did the Quran actually come from? Who is the father of lies? Well, John chapter 8 verse 44 says, You are of your father the devil, and the desires of your father you want to do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and does not stand in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks from his own resources, for he is a liar and the father of it. Who can appear as an angel of light? In 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 14, And no wonder, for Satan himself transforms himself into an angel of light. Who is capable of performing all sorts of deceptive miracles and signs and lying wonders? In 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 9, The coming of the lawless one is according to the working of Satan, with all power, signs, and lying wonders. And who is it that goes prowling about like a roaring lion, seeking all those he can devour. In 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. So who is this we are talking about? The answer is Satan. It was Satan in that cave with Muhammad who recited the Quran, not the angel Gabriel. 
Satan deceived Muhammad by coming as an angel of light. And now, there are 1.7 billion followers of Islam who have been deceived. These people trust the Quran. You know, believing and trusting the Quran without researching where it came from is like trying to start a car without an engine in it. It's just stupid. And now, these 1.7 billion people believe that Jesus is not the Son of God and that Jesus didn't die on the cross for their sins. Congratulations, Satan. You succeeded in deceiving an entire nation of people. So I don't care what the other 99% of the Quran says. Let me repeat that. I don't care what the other 99% of the Quran says because it contradicts two of the most important topics of the entire Bible. That is exactly how Satan works to deceive you. He gives you a lot of truth mixed in with a few lies. But the lies are the most important part. And in this case, it is Jesus being the Son of God and Jesus' death on the cross. The devil is in the details and the followers of Islam have ignored the details. With all that said, whether you are a follower of Islam, a Christian, an atheist, a Buddhist monk, whatever your beliefs, it doesn't matter. We can all agree 100% with absolutely no doubts that Satan was the one in that cave with Muhammad, not the angel Gabriel. If we we're playing a game, at this point I would say, checkmate. But this isn't a game. This is your eternal soul that is on the line. We are all descendants of Adam and Eve. Every one of us is equal and deserves to know the truth. So to conclude, I would like to say this to all the followers of the Islam religion and to those of you who trust the Quran. You have just been shown the truth. There is an old saying, the truth will set you free, but first it'll piss you off. I am sure many of you are shaking your heads thinking, how could I have been so dumb to believe that the angel Gabriel would have said those things? How stupid of me. And now you might be angry. Well, in the end, it is better to know the truth. So you have an opportunity right now to accept the true living God and accept the fact that Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins. Please stop being deceived by the evil Quran. Jesus Christ loves you and wants you to have eternal life in heaven. It's a simple process to accept Jesus. We can do it right now with the sinner's prayer. If you are not ready and need more time because you are shocked about what you have just heard, then by all means take more time. But come back to this video when you are ready and say this prayer before it is too late. The world we live in in 2016 is crazy and Jesus' return could be at any time. So to all of you who are tired of being deceived and lied to and are ready to accept the truth of Jesus Christ, then say this prayer out loud with me. But make sure you mean it in your heart because you can't fool God. So here we go. Look at the prayer on the screen and repeat after me. Heavenly Father, I come to you in prayer, asking for the forgiveness of my sins. I confess with my mouth and believe with my heart that Jesus is your son and that he died on the cross at Calvary, that I might be forgiven and have eternal life in the kingdom of heaven. Father, I believe that Jesus rose from the dead and I ask you right now, to come into my life and be my personal Lord and Savior. I repent of my sins and will worship you all the days of my life because your word is truth. I confess with my mouth that I am born again and cleansed by the blood of Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. Awesome, awesome. Congratulations to anyone who just said that prayer and has accepted Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior. Amen. So thank you very much for watching this video. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. You can do so by clicking the link on the screen now. Also, please share this video with your friends and family to help spread the truth of Jesus Christ. God bless and I will see you next time.